All right, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, something different, uh, a little bit of a small tutorial uh, to help those um, be able to play Adventure Quest um, using a Chromebook. Uh, the game has three launchers. Uh, you have a Windows version, uh, the Mac download, and the Linux. Most users probably use Windows. There's probably a, a, a decent sized group that uses Mac. I'm not too sure how many users use Linux. Most Linux computers, I mean, that's pretty rare from what I understand. But Chromebooks uh, have the ability to run some Linux stuff. Um, but you will need a, a higher end Chromebook for most, most Linux applications. Most Chromebooks, for those that don't know, are kind of basic as far as they got low end hardware because the software is uh, very uh, small and sleek and trimmed down so it's it doesn't require a lot of resources to run it basically it's just a web browser based system um, but um, in order for you to um, run Linux applications at least a little bit uh, more smoothly without lag and causing it to slow down greatly you probably I would recommend buying a Chromebook with it's gonna be a higher end you know you could probably buy Chromebooks for under $200 um, but I in this case I would recommend buying one that has at minimum the the 11th uh, gen Intel processors they may have some out now that's got the 12th gen the leap in performance from 10th generation to 11th generation is pretty significant especially uh, the ones with the i5 on up they have the brand new integrated graphics cards you won't um, uh, see uh, any lag uh, probably the the best one uh, as far as um, what I would call the best bang for your buck is I would look for the Acer Spin 713 and get the i5 model. You can sometimes catch it on sale for uh, maybe, I th I'm trying to remember what I paid for this one. This is the one that I use now. Uh, maybe in the 500s, uh, maybe this upcoming holiday season you can get it for that and that's a good deal for the for the performance that it gives but first of all what you're gonna do uh, once you have your your Chromebook um, so what you're gonna basically we're gonna uh, play the game using the Linux download but the first thing you're gonna do you're gonna go to your settings and you're just gonna type Linux and then select it and then what you'll do is this will, I think this will say enable or turn on or something like that. And then it'll ask you to select a disk size. It'll default to 10 gigabytes. You can change it in that moment or you can change it at any point in time later. I, I've changed mine to 25. Um, but that'll enable you to run Linux applications. Now Linux applications will not run in the same manner as Windows or even like some of the apps that you'll see on a phone or um, you know these Chromebooks run Android apps um, you have to then there's some there's some steps to make it work and then there's some uh, ulterior ways that actually will make it a little bit more user-friendly but what the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the terminal the bottom of your app drawer you'll have Linux apps um, and then um, you're going to use that terminal there so what you're going to do is you're going to download this file it'll download okay and then it will download automatically to the downloads folder in the native Chrome OS file system and it's this one right here. I actually have an older version still in here, here, but it's here. 
when you enable the Linux functionality, it creates this file here. And then what you're going to do, you're going to left click and drag this file over to Linux files. And then you'll see that th that, are, that they're here. Okay. Now, with the Chrome OS, this app image system has to be done this way. App image is a is a file type for some Linux applications, um, and then when you download them, they will not run like what you think of like an exe file in Windows, where you just download it and it's just ready to go. You just click it and it launches and it runs. It doesn't work that way. You have to be able to make like I can't just click this and make it run. Um, because it's not really it, that file is not in the Linux uh, system or the sandbox that's there. So, in order to make it make it an executable file, this is when you're going to launch your terminal. All right, and then here, you know, after you download any app image, you're going to put sudo chmod a plus x space exactly as that shows spaces and everything and then you're going to type the name of the application so um, and when I mean the name of the application it has to be every last thing listed so capital A for Artix underscore capital G for games underscore launcher with the capital L hyphen X lowercase X 86 underscore 64 dot and you're gonna actually type in app image etc etc okay um, so uh, one thing about the terminal application once you begin typing the name of the application if there's no other applications that have a similar name you can then hit the tab key and it'll just it'll already see that the application from the Linux folder and then it'll fill it out by itself and then from here you just hit enter and I've already done this so it's giving me an error So at this point, um, under normal circumstances, in order to run it, you would hit the period, backslash, and then you just type it. And then I hit tab, and so on and so forth. And it'll run. All right. There is also a uh, some applications that set up Linux based file systems that will actually pull up some of these applications. So in having, instead of having to use the terminal and type, and it's kind of old school looking, it's kind of outdated. Um, you know, it's not like Windows and stuff, you just click an icon and you're done. You can download, you can get on Google and download like best file manager applications for Linux, and they'll give you several. There'll be one called Nautilus. Will become one. Will uh, be one called Dolphin, and there's several. Um, and then what you'll do there, and I've got actually Dolphin here. I think this is the Nautilus one. I forget the name of this one. But what you'll do there is you'll actually select the application, and then you'll actually hit File you go to properties and click over to permissions and this box this says execute allow executing files program will not be checked you will just go ahead and, and check it and then you close and then from here you can actually double click it and it'll launch the launcher from there and then you can select your game and, and log in and that's how you'll play on a Chromebook now, Artix will tell you they do not support Chrome OS because um, 
there are some additional steps you must take to run this. So there's probably not very uh, good support help for it. But that should get you started for those that wanted to uh, check it out on a Chromebook.